Boober's Dialogue. Um, this is a One School for All lecture by Andrew Thomas at the S4 University College, which I want my marvellous students to be uh, watching by Tuesday the 9th of October. So we're going to talk, uh, we're, we're going to move a little bit away from um, the idea of, of, of testing students and look at um, the ways, various uh, ways in which we can have communication with our students. Um, and I guess the best way of moving away from the idea of testing and diagnosing to communicating and having one-to-one -one conversations is by using um, Martin Buber's idea of dialogue. Um, Martin Buber was an Austrian um, existential um, philosopher, and he's he's followed up by the entire dialogue movement in many ways. Um, his famous word "I and thou" um, was a great inspiration for other f thinkers like Emmanuel Levinas and Franz Rosenzweig, um, and and it's 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 been a, uh, something of a watershed in modern thought. So let's move on um, and ask who was Buber? Now Buber was a um, um, a Jewish thinker who was born in Vienna in 1878, um, but he very um, very early on moved to live with his grandfather in Ukraine in Lviv, um, and um, spent much of his childhood there. And his grandfather was um, was a very learned um, Jew who um, who spent a lot of time studying. Um, the Jewish scriptures. He then moved to live with his dad uh, at the age of 14 and then did this kind of amazing Erasmus world um, or maybe amazing Erasmus journey because he, he moved initially back to Vienna um, and um, and studied there for a while um, but he also took studies in um, in areas around Vienna and um, Moved then to Leipzig, then down to Zurich, and um, and studied for a while in Berlin, um, where he he came into contact with a great deal of mystical philosophy and, and existential philosophy, um, and um, and that's um, and and soon became known for his Zionism. Now it's it's not the kind of Zionism that we would associate with um, a supporting of the state of Israel's um, unilateral power. Um, in its territories, as today, it's movement. It's it's something that we would perhaps today associate more with the kibbutz movement. I, how can um, hu human um, human communities live together in in peacefully in uh, in dialogue and um, and peace? Uh, he's devoted a great deal of his um, of his time to um, to adult education. Um, in um, Heppenheim and Bergstrasse at first, and um, and then had a position in um, Frankfurt, um, which um, where he first studied and then came back as a teacher, um, um, where he was either dismissed or certainly departed from that job under a dark cloud in 1933 when Hitler came to power. But he he basically spent all of his adult life working in adult education, both at university level but almost also at an informal level, working to educate, um, especially um, Jewish education. And in 1937-38, he um, travelled to Jerusalem, where he um, where he continued to um, to work at university there, um, teaching. Based on by this time, he was uh, famous for his philosophical work, and so he taught his own works. Um, and he died in 1965. So that's, that's roughly his life. Let's go go straight on to his um, his. Ideas that was him traveling all over the world apparently. Um, now the big idea is um, is this idea of um, who is who. Uh, so maybe that I'm uh, this cat is talking about me. Uh, imagine that and talking trash and telling terrible rumors about what I do in my spare time. Um, and now I am an ab um, object in that cat's world. I'm I'm a him. I'm the cat refers to me as a him, but not a you. Now, if we were to um, change this situation, uh, the relationship between the cat and me, and um, and, and say I'm actually there, and, and we're having, I'm having a conversation with the cat, you know, and just the cat and I, or maybe it's that way, I don't really know. Um, cat and I are talking about something else. I'm the cat, then the cat's conversation partner. I'm no longer referred to as a him, but as a, as a you. Um, the cat can't really. Um, trap me in that in that world. We're not talking about me anymore because we're talking. Um, he, the cat is actually talking to me, and there's a, a completely different relationship. There is um, a set of our, um, and, and this is true of whenever we look at the world, we can look at things um, in the world. 
you know, whether it be fish or dogs or lasagna, um, we, we're looking at the world or even the end of the world. Um, we're, we're talking about things, but the people with whom we're talking about are not those things that we're talking about. Yeah. So with, um, the world is one conception, but our conversation partner, they are something that we can't really capture in that conversation because, um, because there's a difference between talking to you like this and talking to it over there. And, um, and Buber kind of identifies this um, enormously as, as two complete, a complete shift in communication. There is, no, um, there is no sentence in which you and it can actually end up as the same thing. Um, there's just, it's just a completely different grammar to it. Um, when we're talking about it, the, the it can't talk back. But when we're talking to you, you can talk back. You can challenge my, uh, my conceptions of the world and we can talk about something that we have in common together. So two completely different ways of relating to um, our world. We have conversation partners and we have things about which we're talking and those are just two utterly different relations. When it comes to testing, we'll be referring, we'll be asking questions like, who are you talking to? And of course, a lot of testing takes place on the basis of pre-prepared tests, which, um, which individual pedagogical experts administer on, I guess, almost on behalf of a scientist. So the question is, whose words is it? And, and, and can the person... Um, can the person talk back when they are actually um, essentially being sub um, being subjected to this uh, regime of knowledge where they are being described? The test is designed so that this person can dis can be described correctly. So it looks like an I and you conversation, but in reality, essentially they are becoming part of the world. They're becoming an it for the expert, and um, and that's just. Two, again, two different pedagogical situations where you're talking to the pupil, but when you're then describing the pupil. And those are mutually exclusive. You can't have those in the same situation. This sounds like a great deal of uh, modern philosophy and, and abstract thinking. This has enormous consequences for when you are talking to your pupils um, about how you think them through, how you can take them seriously, um, and, and what you can do to help their lives. We're going to talk about that in class. <laughs>